Hello Happy Valley! Today's video is all about working with the traditional dip pin. So if you have not done so already, you need to come by and pick up an art kit from the front office. Uh, but if you have picked up your art kit, the supplies that you're going to need for this assignment are the pin itself, this is the nib you'll need, uh, you'll need some blue paper towels, you'll need some ink which I've put in a small container for you along with the cleaner. You will also be needing this worksheet. Please do not do any of this on regular paper. Uh, this is a specific paper designed to handle uh, the dip pen. If you work with regular paper, it's not going to work. It'll actually ruin the paper uh, and ruin the surfaces. One thing I'd like to say is before you start, uh, whenever you go to open up the container of ink or the blue liquid, please be very careful. Uh, some of them are filled to the brim and they get everywhere. But anyway, let's get started. All right, before we get started, you are going to need the um, pen holder. You're going to need a nib. Uh, you are going to need some type of pin cleaner, blue pin cleaner or Windex actually works just fine. I've added a few test strips if you have the art kit or some kind of paper you can work with. Um, a thicker paper is best if you're using, you know, computer paper that's fine, uh, but a thicker paper like a cardstock would, would be best as a test strip. And then you're going to need some India ink and some blue paper towels. Please use blue paper towels. Uh, they should be in those art kits. Um, regular paper towels are okay, but the blue are best. They're a softer, they're more cloth-like, uh, and they're better for these, these pins. So if you got your art kit, you have the pin holder and then you have the nib. So this nib is actually going to be inserted into the, the pin holder. Just got to get that in there. Watch out, they're a little sharp. And this is a brand new nib. Um, and it would be best for you guys to kind of rinse them, clean them off with a little bit of pin cleaner. Uh, so take that and just kind of dip it in there. You can work it around. Um, you know, I put some of those, the, the pin cleaner into a little container. Um, you can move it to another cup if you have, or you can even dip your, your rag into it. But what this does is if it's a new pin or even an old pin, it's going to get off maybe some extra stuff that was on there. Um, this is getting some of the ink off of the, the pin holder. Uh, but it, but if it's a brand new nib, it's going to have a varnish on it. Um, and we want to kind of get that off of there. We want it just to be just the pin itself. All right, so let's talk about working with this dip pin. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. But you have this, um, it's curved up. Okay, I have right now, I have, it's hard to see on the screen, but I have the curved part facing me. Okay, and what you want to do is when you're working with this pin, uh, you want that curved part facing down on the paper. And when you have that curved part facing down on the paper, and you put a little pressure, watch what happens. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Can you see what's happening? Look right here in between. There we go. You see what's happening. So those little things that are opening up, those are called the tines. They're like little legs. In this space in between here, that's known as the reservoir. That's the bladder. Okay. If you have the pin facing you with the curved part facing you and you try to do the same thing, I'm putting pressure right now, it's not going to open those tines. Okay. The pin's not going to work properly. So when you use the dip pin, you want the curved part to be facing down on the paper. Now, you barely have to give pressure with a, with a brand new nib or with any nib actually. Um, if they are not properly um, working, you'll have 
a lot of ink being blotted down. There's there's all kinds of things that can happen when you're first starting to work with the dip pen. So it's it's frustrating uh, to say the least because you're going to sometimes see where you'll have big old blobs of ink that are going to pop out, and that's just you know it will eventually go away with with practice. Um, and sometimes you just can't even control it. it. It can be quite frustrating because India ink is very permanent. There's really no way to absorb it or pick it off of the paper. So if you have a mistake, you're just going to have to live with it, work with it, or restart over. So what we're going to do today is work on the worksheet. Now, I, these were in the art kits. They were also available for pickup at the office. What we're going to do is practice some of our, our marks. So our first one is going to be hatching. Now I have these test strips here for you. These are, you know, I put them in the kits. They are for you to kind of practice and test on maybe before you want to work on your dip pin. I always like to, to keep one right next to me uh, that I like to check my pin, make sure it's working properly before I just go and make a mark. But we are going to be creating small value scales working with, with the pen and ink mark that we're working with, so hatching. We have lightest on, on the left-hand side, darkest on the right-hand side. I prefer to work from right to left. One reason why is I'm left-handed. Uh, so if you are left-handed, you totally understand what I'm talking about because lefties be work this way so my hand ends up getting into all this stuff and dragging it along with me. The other reason why I like to do the darkest to lightest is I can see I made my darkest mark I need to make this a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less. Sometimes for me it's harder to add more, add more, add more. Uh, so anyway, when you work with the ink and you want to put ink on the pin. You just want to get it to that reservoir, to that to that uh, rectangle. So you don't have to completely submerge that entire pin. You just really want to get to the point where that reservoir is. And I like to sometimes tap a little bit extra off. Now that I have that ink in there, I'm going to just test it a little bit. And I'm barely making contact with my paper. I make a very light mark. The more pressure you add, the darker that mark is going to be. So you really just want to hit the paper with the with the point of your your nib lightly, putting any kind. I'm not even putting any pressure. I'm just letting the nib meet the paper, and that's how you make those marks. So don't put pressure. If you're one of these kids that puts a lot of pressure on the pin, you're going to have a lot of ink blobs. But anyway, hatching is marks made in one direction, all working in the same direction. So I'm going to go at an angle because it's just easier for me. And they're tiny little marks. And we want to fill that space with these tiny marks. And you'll notice if you're not putting a lot of pressure uh, that you will have a good amount of, of ink left over. It's really not going to... Um, use up the ink as fast as you think. So I've got those marks all going in one direction and that's going to be my darkest mark. And now I'm going to go on to the next one. This is my my next darkest. So I'm going to have a little bit more white space in here to fill that space up. And I'm going to make it just a little bit darker. I mean lighter. So I'm going to have a little bit more white in there. I feel like that's adequate enough. So I'm going to move on to my next one. I'm still working with that original amount of ink. I haven't had to, to go and refill the reservoir yet. That looks a little bit lighter. Notice now that I'm kind of moving around that space. I'm not really filling every little space in. That looks the, a little bit lighter. And then this one is my lightest, meaning I have the most white space in here. Uh, 
And see why I like working from darkest to lightest is now maybe if I wanted to make this middle one a little bit different because these two are kind of the same, I could go and add more lines. It's impossible to subtract. And that kind of sets them apart. Below, we are going to shade these forms with the same mark. So I want to create this, and I want this side over here to be my darkest. So I'm going to just keep adding a lot of hatching. Remember, just the lines going in one direction. I really want to shade that area. So that's my darkest area. This is where my light is hitting. It's my lightest, and then this is getting indirect light over here. So it's my medium one. On the sphere, these are just little lines going in one direction. You decide where that light source is hitting. We're going to shade this using hatching marks. Remember, lines going in one direction. There you go. Let's move on to the section below it, the cross hatching. Now, in between, you can rinse your, your nib if you like to, or if you take a break, you need to rinse the nib. Do not let India ink sit on that nib. It will begin to dry, and it can really ruin the, the nib. Uh, so if you, you know, work on the hatching section and you decide to take a break, you need to rinse that uh, that nib. And I'm going to do that just, just for show. But what I like to do is take the nib, place that into that, um, you know, Windex works just fine, to be honest with you. You don't have to go buy pin cleaner. Um, so if this is something that you're interested in, in doing later on, maybe as um, you, know, you, you want to explore this medium, um, you do not have to go buy this pin cleaner. This is, is um, you know, Dr. Martin's um, Bombay Pin Cleaner. This stuff is about $4 a bottle, and as you can see, it's, it's not a lot. Now, you don't really need a, a lot of, um, of this stuff. You know, ink comes in little one-ounce bottles. You can buy those at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or anything like that. But to be honest with you, this is Windex. It is Windex, Windex, Windex. Uh, so you can use that, and it's just the same thing. I'm not kidding you. Same stuff. Now, I bought this pin cleaner, obviously, to show, uh, to talk about, but I really, in, in the classroom, I use Windex. Um, it's so much cheaper, and it's just, it's the same thing. There's no point in spending $4 on this little one-ounce bottle of pin cleaner when I can go and spend $4 on, you know, a gallon size of Windex. All right, so just make sure that, you know, when you, if you do clean your, your nib, uh, to properly dry it as well. You don't want any of that pin cleaner um, getting into the, the India ink and ruining that. Now, India ink is quite permanent, um, so it stains. If it gets on clothes, it's just going to be part of that garment forever. If it gets in your hair and you have blonde hair, your hair will be black. And I am a hairstylist, and I will tell you that India ink will not come out with bleach. Uh, so if you do have little blonde hairs, don't get them in that ink uh, unless you want to have black hair forever until you cut it off. I mean, I'm not kidding you. This stuff is, is potent. Uh, do not try to give yourself a little homegrown tattoo. Um, you don't know what you're doing. You're going to end up getting hepatitis B. So do not stab yourself with these nibs uh, and try to give yourself a, a tattoo. It doesn't work that way. Okay. Believe me, I've had these things done in my classroom. That's why I say this. So let's, I'm going to add more ink to my pen. I didn't need to, but I wanted to clean my pen to show you what to do. So again, I'm going to add some ink. I just want to fill that pen to the reservoir. I really don't want to go past that uh, threshold. Now, if you do go past that, that um, curved threshold, 
You really want to get off that ink before you start making a mark or you're going to be pretty upset. Uh, what happens is the reservoir holds the ink in, uh, but if you get up past this, this middle line threshold and you get up in this area, there's nothing there to hold that ink in. So once you hit vertically with the pen, it's just going to make a big old blob on your paper. Remember, you want to have this dip pen facing the, the curved part facing the paper. And we're going to move on to the cross hatching. So this is adding uh, marks in at least two directions. So hatching and then and crossing it. So again, I'm going to work on the, the diagonal. Working in one direction. And then I'm going to work in that opposite direction. Now every single line does not have to, to cross. And you can cross in multiple directions. Uh, if I'm going to do that, I like to turn my paper. Think smarter, not harder. Don't move your hand around, move that paper around. Now I'm just going in four directions. I'm really going to make this nice and dark. So there is my darkest section. I'm now going to go on to the next one. Leaving a little bit more white space in between. And I feel pretty satisfied with that one. So my next one, more space in between. Now one thing, and I think this is happening to my pen right now, is it's picked up some fibers of the, of the paper. So sometimes you'll get some kind of peeling where you have some of the paper getting stuck in, in the fibers. And at that point you just need to kind of uh, take your rag and get out as much as you can. Which I kind of feel is happening to mine because I have a thicker line that's being created. Or I did have one. And there you go. Now my reservoir is completely empty now. So what I'm going to do is refill my pen. But before I do that, because I feel like I have some fibers in here, I'm just going to take this pen onto this little rag, press out, get off as much ink as I can, and I'm ready to move on to the next one. Come back in here, refill my pin to the reservoir. I might test it on this little test strip. That feels better. All right, and adding some shading. So again, this is going to be my darker section. Hatching, cross hatching. This one above it is my lightest. And this one down here is my middle grade. Simple enough. Shading a curvilinear form. First I'm going to add my hatch marks. I'm going to cross hatch. And there you have it. All right, so these next two are scumbling and stippling. All right, so scumbling, and this is that really crazy uh, tiny squiggly line mark. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to just fill in this darker space with the dip pin. Now you want to make sure that that nib is facing down. If you ever end up moving that pencil or that, that pin holder around, and it ends up facing the other way. It's not going to work. You might be able to get a little bit of ink out of it, but it's, it's not going to work 
uh, properly. And you might even end up picking up some of the paper and flicking the ink back on yourself. So you really just want it to scumble. You're just doing quick little squiggly lines all in one little area. The more controlled, meaning the, the smaller the space that you're working in, the more control that you have over that pen, the darker the mark is going to be. Now we're just going to come over here. And I, what I like to do when I scumble is kind of pick my pen up. It's, it's not always staying in contact with the paper. So there's sometimes I'm just moving it around, but it's just hovering above. Quite an easy mark to make. This one's fun for a lot of the kids. And there you go. Simple, simple, simple. Again, over here, this is my darkest area. A scumbling is one of those techniques that you generally use for hair, uh, beards. It's not one that you that is often used. It's more of a, you know, for textures of that sort. And also, you really want it to be as, as wild and about as you can. You don't want to sit there and make the same exact mark over and over again. So you want to skip around your paper. And saving the hardest for last, but yet my favorite one is stippling. Stippling is little tiny dots. I don't need to refill my pen. We're doing quite well. So I'm going to start over here. And this is tedious, but you, you know, do it right. The more pressure you put, the darker the mark is going to be. You really want to have a light pressure. Um, I'm not even opening those tines because I don't want a massive little dot on here. Now, if I do want more pressure, I can. And I'm starting to see my reservoir open up. I'm probably going to have to add some more ink. There's my reservoir. So now I need to add more ink. The thing with stippling is, yes, it is very time consuming, but it can have such a awesome outcome. It's, it's one of my favorite um, pen and ink techniques. And you don't want to, what I like to call, jackhammer it. Um, when my kids get tired or you get tired, you tend to make larger sounds with it. And sometimes, you know, especially when they're working with the pins, the regular pins that start sounding like this. All right, we don't need all of that, um, all that sound being added. Uh, you know, if your hand's getting tired, if you're getting tired, um, take a break. Rinse off the nib. Um, go sit down for a minute, go watch a cartoon show, take 30 minutes, come back and work on it. Placing a lot of little dots on here. And don't worry if, if your paper ends up getting a big old black ink blob on there. Okay, that's just going to happen. It happens. Uh, once you learn to really control the pins, that's when that kind of ceases. Another reason why that might be happening is because you filled up past that that uh, threshold on the pin. So once you go past that again, you're going to have ink coming out. See the reason why I like to go from darkest to lightest is now I can come back over here and darken these up a bit. And 
And there we go. And let's add some shading to these areas. And then coming over here and adding a little shading to this curvilinear shape. Follow the shape. Okay, at the bottom it says line variation and textures. Create the lines listed below in the spaces provided. So you're just going to kind of play around with this stuff. So a wood grain texture, um, the best way to create a wood grain texture is to start with like a number nine or a number six and making that knot. So you can place that wherever you'd want on here. So it looks like a number six maybe. And you're going to kind of make varying lines going around that space. You can make another number if you wanted to. Just playing around with that. The one below it, thick and thin. Make thick and thin marks. So add some pressure. Release some pressure. Add a really thick pressure. Make some really thin lines. Just practice with that dip in. Make sure that the curved part is facing down. Make sure that you haven't ended up letting it turn around on you. My reservoir is empty, so again, I'm going to come over here, make sure I fill that up, not going past the threshold. Wavy lines, this will be fun. Try and do some wavy little lines in here. Making sure that pin, the nib, is facing the paper. You could even do some zigzag lines. You know, we think about working with pins, and this is just crazy. Imagine what we would have to do, you know, hundreds of years ago when they were using these types of pins all the time. They'd have to carry their own ink around with them. All right, and fur, that's something fuzzy. Make this look fuzzy. Make it look furry. Make it look prickly. Whatever you want to. Just have some fun with it. Try doing your name uh, down below here if you wanted to, you know, write your write your name in regular uh, script. And then try and do it in cursive. I do so much better with the cursive part. All right, and the last little thing is practice shading the rows. I want you to try different pen and ink techniques and, and add some shading to this. So I'm going to leave that for you guys. I'm not going to do an example for it. Uh, but have a little fun with it and, and create your own shading. All right, have fun and good luck.